Hey, welcome back. So I started this video doing a review of the A350 and my shots were so horrible of the A350, I actually changed what this video is about to be uh, going to be about and switched over to simply reviewing LATAM, which is how I got down to uh, the flight that I took the A350 on. And I've flown LATAM many times. It's, you know, living in South America, it's one of the South American airlines that flies around here. I've done a head-to-head -head video with LATAM and Avianca because they frequently fly to the same places, at least in Ecuador and the Colombia area. And uh, both are solid airlines. Uh, there's some things I really like about LATAM, and I'm starting to like it more and more as I fly it. So I decided to do a review of the premium economy offering from LATAM. This is about the best seat you're going to get in most of these commuter flights around uh, South America, going between you know, certainly Ecuador to Colombia, down to, to Lima. I'm not sure about over to Brazil, but flying around these flights that are just, uh, you know, less than three hours long, they seldom have business class service. Their, their best fare is uh, a, a premium economy or huh, a con premium economy. Yes. Yeah. Never going to make a career as a public speaker there. So it, it's not a bad fare class. It's usually not particularly expensive and you get lots of perks. So let's break down a flight that I took from, I think the pricing I'm using is a flight that I fly between uh, Mata and Quito. Longer trips have a slightly larger differential in the prices between the classes, but it's the same concept. So let's um, get into it. Okay, let's jump right on in here. So when you book a ticket on LATAM, you typically have a setup that looks like this, where you've got your basic ticket, similar to US basic things. It's the lowest fare that they used on all the advertising. It's extremely limited, um, no check bags, no pre-seat selection, et cetera. Um, basically, it's the, the suckage part of the plane. Then you got light, full, and then you have premium. And if you look, the difference between full and premium, or even light and premium, is really not that big. At only $10 more than light and only a buck more in change than full, it's not a bad deal. Let's look at what you get for that. So if you look here, I've picked the uh, light one, which is $10 less. And you're immediately greeted with a screen that allows you to cancel your flight if you'd like to for an extra $9.20 which is almost the complete difference of the fare right there. So if you want to cancel, this is probably not worth getting a light one. Now, if you can see, you can uh, pick one of the cushier seats up front, not the first three rows, but uh, one of the cushier seats up front for 960 or pick an extra row for eight, eight bucks and some change. Now, if you already added in the cancel fee, you're already above what you would pay for economy, uh, premium economy. One oddity I have yet to figure out is why the middle seats are 11 bucks and the regular seats are $9.60 to upgrade to. Who wants a middle seat ever? Now, if you notice on the seat chart, it starts at seat row four. The first three rows are not accessible to any other ticket except a premium economy ticket. And the reason why is uh, they re restrict the middle seat and you have uh, better service up there. Let's take a peek at what they look like. Here's the premium area. As you can see, the middle seat is blocked off, so you have no one sitting next to you. As you can see, there's real value here. Uh, if you pick the light and add in a cancellation and a better seat up front, you're going to actually be paying more than the premium economy cost. With the premium economy, you get all the benefits, plus cancellation, plus the nicer seats up front, service on the flight, including meal service, and you're in boarding group one. So the premium economy advantages do not end or begin with the flight. Actually, it uh, turned out when I was in Guayaquil heading down to Lima, I walked up to the lounge and I was pulling out my priority pass because it's listed as a priority pass lounge and I do have priority pass. But they looked at my ticket and said, oh, you have lounge access. I was on a list because I'm premium economy on that flight. Uh, same thing coming back from uh, Lima, I was able, there's two priority pass lounges right next to each other. Didn't even have to use my priority pass. I was uh, shuttled on through into the uh, lounge, a very nice lounge, by the way. I'll, I'll try to get some reviews of, of that in here at some point. And uh, I had a wonderful time. So in both going 
in each direction, I was managed to get a couple drinks and a very nice meal in while waiting for the flight. So I think that is a huge advantage to premium economy. When you add up the cost of what you'd pay in extras if you bought a lighter ticket, assuming you want those extras, but I like the cushy seats. I want priority boarding. I want lounge access. So these tickets really pay off for me. If you've ever watched this channel, you know I am a Delta fanboy. And one of the nice things about flying Latam, one of the things which attracted me to early on was that it is a core Delta partner airline. What does that mean? That means they share status. So my Delta SkyMiles status um, in their medallion programs gets me the perks and benefits on Latam as well. For example, let's say I'm running late. There's the SkyMiles priority line that I can just hop right on up to if I need to go to the, to the counter. Um, I get upgrade options and general, a uh, much better course of treatment when I'm flying with the airline. And I enjoy that status. I really do. Especially uh, when you fly a lot, it becomes real nice, as I'm sure you all know. So it, besides just getting the perks of being a uh, Sky Miles member, you also can earn Sky Miles, both MQM and MQD, uh, mile, which I don't think MQM has a meaning anymore because there's no qualifying miles. It's all qualifying dollars now. But miles still mean something. You can use them for uh, tickets and whatnot. But if you want status, it's a mile qualifying dollars. And you earn that when you fly on Latam. Like all of these programs, it's a little opaque. Let's break down an example of one of my more recent flights and how I got MQDs and MQMs on that flight. So this is a chart that's pretty classic if you've ever looked at uh, Delta miles. So if you're flying on a core partner airline, they're all pretty similar. This is a specific chart for LATAM. So there, there's many other fare classes down below here, but since this video is on premium economy and better, I decided to just pull that out. So your total miles earned is going to be either 125 or 150% of the miles you fly. Uh, difference between P and W, if you can decode that, please leave a comment. Your medallion qualifying dollars, which is really what's most important nowadays, um, are at 25% on these flights. And that's 25% of the base miles, not what you paid. Uh, it's important to note that it's the miles flown, not what you pay, that they're basing MQDs on the core partners. The reason this is important is because this particular flight, I flew on points. I didn't pay a dime for and I still got MQDs for it. So here's a breakdown of the flights from my uh, sky mileage count. So the base miles on the flight was 164 miles. I got, um, as you can see, a nice bonus on the miles of 336 and at 25% of 164, if my math is right, is where I got the 41 M dollars in MQDs from. So this counts towards medallion status for 2025 for me. So I hope you enjoy this video on LATAM. As you can see, it's it's a it's a fun little airline. It's great if you're a Delta Sky member, you get some good value with it. And this is primarily the airline now that I fly around South America in. Um, sorry, Avianca, just LATAM's got slightly better product and I've been using it. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll try to get more up. Thanks.